uh, today uh, this is the second exercise that we are doing based on the first experiment whatever we have done what was the first exercise we have done the first exercise was something like that now consider the number 123 what we did is okay we have extracted the number 3 number 2 number 1 that is each digit and we have found the sum of all the digit in a given integer so this is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 this is equal to 6 this is what we are saying now based on this today is the second exercise simpler than yesterday right so what is that we do is today a given a number n okay we need to find out whether it is even or odd right so for any problem solving the logic is a very important thing right logic is expressed in two different ways how do we express the first way is first way is flow chart right the second one is algorithm these are the two different okay ways in which we express the concept right so shall we begin now today right now the problem definition today's problem definition right is given a number n we need to find out whether it is even or odd right so for this a logic the logic it goes like this what is that logic see what we do is we read okay it goes like this now look at that the logic today as a part of the second exercise I write in the form of an algorithm only in yesterday's exercise what we did is we took one example we worked out and that is logic now today what we do that same logic we try to express directly in the form of an algorithm right so shall we do that right right problem definition is given given a number n find find out okay whether it is a even or odd this is the number but you need to express this very systematically what is the input for this what is the input for this input is a positive number n right yes. what is the output for this output is a message saying that it is an even number or it is an odd number ok you have to give a message for example now I will input number 3 what is the output I get right it is odd number I input ok number 2 it should say that it is an even number so this is a kind of ok output that we are expecting please remember whenever you are writing anywhere you have to go in a particular sequence one is a problem statement given a number n find out whether it is a even or odd this is a problem statement then you have an input what is the input that you give a positive number n you need to write it clearly right whether it is a a positive number n then output is right whether it is a even or odd so you have a format problem definition input output what is the next one what is the next part of uh, our procedure yesterday we have seen it what is that methodology right so we need to write a methodology right it goes like this methodology see now let's look into that right in this okay we consider algorithm so what is the step number one yesterday we have gone through what is step number one yes no start no what is step number one Accept. I need a number so what should I do accept a number n read number n read read okay n in short I write read number n right then what is the step number two read number n then what is the next step what is the next step check if it is even or how to do it how do you check whether it is even or odd that, yeah what we have to do is okay okay we have to do n mod right 2 let x be equal to n mod 2 right then what we have to do step number 3 right 
you need to check x. Right? Right? If x equal to what? Zero. Zero, correct. Then display what? The given number, the given number, number is even. Else, otherwise, what you do? Display the given number, the given number is odd. This is the logic that we use in step number 3. You can split this logic into several steps or you can write in one. No issues about that. Then what you have to do? What is the step number 4? Stop it. Right? So we have a problem definition, we have an input, we have an output and we have a methodology. Now look at that. I will recollect once again. So read number n. Find out n mod 2. Let it be x. Right? Check this value x. If this x equal to 0, then the given number is even. Otherwise, given number is odd. Right? For every problem, you need to think in terms of these steps. We call this an algorithm. So what is an algorithm? Algorithm is stepwise procedure to solve given problem. This is very simple. Right? So this is the one way of expressing solution. Shall we get into the other perspective? You note down this later. Right? The other perspective, you will be developing this entire logic on your own and you will be recording it. I will check it. Right? Now let's look into, or you can note down this. It's better you note down. Okay. Now shall we get into the flowchart? Okay. Right? For the same thing. Now we will write the methodology that we are using another concept called flowchart. You please help me how to write it. What is the first step in start. Yeah, start. Then re n right. Re n. Look at the kind of okay the shape that I'm using. Okay, I told you that one. This is the this represents the card, right? This is a start. This is a reading n. Then what we do? We compute okay x, x equal to n mod two, right? Then what we do is we check x. What is the symbol used for checking? A diamond shape, right? So this is what we do is x equal to 0 right now look at that if s what we do if no what we do this is where we take addition if s then what do we do we display a message right what is the symbol used for display see here right right display The given number, given number is right even, right? Now, if it is no, then what you display? Right? Given number is odd. You need to write completely here, right? After that, see here. You stop this. So please go through the logic. You start, read a given number n, right? Find the n mod 2, right? Check this x. The result of n mod 2 is it equal to 0. It means that the given number is even. Stop here. If x is not equal to 0, it means that the given number is odd. Then you stop it here. So this is the logic. Again, I am repeating. For every given problem, you need to think, right, in terms of the logic and logic being expressed in two different ways. One is algorithm, other one is a flowchart. Once you can do this for given any problem, then programming is simple, right? Programming, what we do, the same thing we convert into, right? We write this in, okay, the specified way. We call it as a syntax of a given programming language. 
right? Understood? Right? Note on this. So for this given problem, we have expressed the logic in two different format. One is algorithm, other one is a flowchart. Now we will be writing a C program. So for writing a C program, what we are supposed to know? We are supposed to know the syntax. If a syntax is known, we translate it. If a syntax is not known, we have to refer the book and do it. Right? But the important thing in this solving any problem is creating a logic. If a logic is not known, no matter whether you know the syntax or books are there or whatever it is there, you cannot write a program. So try to give an importance for okay, creating a logic. Once the logic is created, you can refer a syntax and write it. Okay, shall we write a program now? So yesterday we have written already a program, the first program. Now you will be helping me to write this program. Shall we begin? So please help me. Even if it is wrong, we will correct it through interaction. Please remember that one of the very important aspects in learning any computer programming language is you need to interact with the teacher in the class. Anything not understood, right? Immediately in okay, ask the question, right? And another very important thing is whatever the teacher say in the classroom, if you simply listen, you will not understand it. But you feel that you have understood it, right? For this, what you have to do is you have to solve every problem on your own, right? On a piece of paper, try to do it, then you will understand everything. Do not copy any program, any logic from anywhere. Initially, it is all right. It is a hand holding. Initially you can see some like, standard book right, and refer to the logic and start doing it. Okay, After some time you should create your own logic then write a program. If you don't do that then you will not understand anything in computer science. But if you start doing creating a logic on your own then entire computer science and engineering domain field is very simple. Shall we write a program? Right Now we are in the second day, second program. Some of the details of the program we may not be knowing, but we assume that we go ahead as and when we proceed, we will understand that. So what is the first step? Please help me. Hash include stdio.h that we have seen. This is a library. It is a header file. What are the different header files? How do I write it? Should I write in angle bracket only or are there any other ways and all? These are all the questions that you have to ask or learn from your own. Learning on your own, referring internet and book that helps you to gain the knowledge. Right? Sitting in the classroom simply watching, listening okay, will not help you. But that will facilitate you to learn better. Learning is to be done by yourself. Right? So we will see all these things later because this is the second program. Right? But we know that this is required, this header file is required, it acts as a library okay, for input-output related functions. That's all we understand now. What is the next one? Int main. Right. We have seen int main open bracket, close bracket. In between all these things, logic we write. But you have missed one very important thing. Can you tell me what is that? Very important thing, you cannot afford to miss. How did you miss this? How did you miss this? Okay, what is that? When you start writing any program, the first thing is, right, you need to write who is an author of this. Right? The date on which you have completed this. This is right, 3rd June 2017. Right? Then you have a, a problem in short array statement. Right? The entire problem statement you need to write here. This okay, documentation at the beginning of every program is necessary. Right? So, what is the symbol? This is called comment. So whatever that you write in the comment, not that is not compiled. So what's the meaning of compilation? The entire English like a text is converted into binary or called machine language so that machine can understand. So details of all these things we will see it later. So this is the first line, then afterwards we will put one complete line. So this separates 
okay, the header from rest on the program. So when I read this, when I look at this particular program, I understand that, oh, this is the author, it's created on this day, this is the problem definition for which solution is created here. Right? So please make it as a your programming style. It's a mandatory. Right? So now shall we write a program? So this is what was missing here. So it is to be written for every program. Now let's begin. After this, whatever we said. So what is the first one? Include stdio.h We said that this is a header file. So we put in the angle bracket. We'll see what all the other argument is. What are the other different header files later. Right? Right? Different things we'll see it later. Then the next one is int main. Even here, why it is int? Are there anything to be written here? Why it is like this? All the things we'll see it later. Yes, there are. And I've told in the last example, what is the main? This is the entry point. Now at this stage, second day, second problem, it's enough for you. But you as a student, whatever the teacher say in the class, you cannot limit yourself what is being covered in the class. You have to go beyond that. Keep on asking questions to yourself. Refer internet, refer different books. What are the different other things we can put in this? But anyhow, we'll see it in different examples. Right. Now, my entire logic, whatever we have created, everything I'll be writing here. This is called body. Right here, whatever I write, everything executes, gets executed. So what is the first step in this? So what all the different memory location required for me? See, in my example, I'm reading a number n, finding whether it is a even or odd. What I'm doing is, I'm taking the n mod to storing that in another variable called x right so i need a two pockets two memory location n and x n for storing a number x for temporary intermediate value to store right correct so shall i declare that so what kind of memory we have now n and x they are integers right are there any other type of memory i can do it? yes that we will see it later, right? So let's write in, right? N comma X, right? That's so. The moment I write this one, two memory location where you can store integer can be stored, but there are different studies you need to perform. When I say memory location, probably in your mobile also. When I say memory, you say that sixteen GB RAM. 32 GB RAM and all, right? There is some unit for that. What is a unit for this? Not down in your question, in your notebook. Okay. What is the size of integer? What is the size of integer? That you have to answer to me. Refer internet, refer book. What is the size of integer? What are the different units of memory? What are the different units used for the memory? Second question. You have to do a little homework. What is the size of integer? And what are the different units used for the memory? Right? Look at that. Questioning in the class is very important thing. Anything that a confusion or doubt you get it immediately ask the question to the teacher that is the only best way of learning in the classroom if you don't open your mouth you will not learn anything are you understanding this okay now I have created two memory location n and x of type integer right now this is a second class second program let's not look into that what is the size of memory you will be learning and you will be telling me tomorrow right then afterwards, what I have to do? I need to read a number. I need to read a number. Right? To read a number, what I should do is, I have to first tell the user, please enter the number. That message I have to display it on the screen. Right? You have to answer during this. No issues about that. 
right? So how do how do you display the message on the screen? Already you got experience in the first program yesterday. How do you write? Print F. Now look at that. There are two aspects in this. Okay? I'll tell you that. Print F enter number. The two aspects. One is a syntax. Right? Syntax of C language says that you should write P R I N T F open bracket in a double quote. In a double quote, whatever you write, that way that is displayed on the screen. Semicolon. But the logic is the logic tells you look at that here you have to read a number. So logic is more important thing. So when you create a logic, it's equivalent how do I achieve this in C programming language? I can search, pick a syntax and write it. So programming is least important activity. Creating a logic is the most important thing. If you know the logic, you can write a program even though you don't know the syntax. You can refer the book for a given problem. But if you know the syntax, you don't know how to create a logic for a given problem, then you can't do anything because logic is not given in any book. For which kind of problem? Not for such a simple thing like uh, okay, finding okay, a solution for a quadratic equation or sine series, cos series or matrix multiplication. No. The programs are written for real life problems. Real life problems taken from a nature, a real life. For that, no book gives a solution. You are creating a solution. So please learn how to create solution on your own. That is the only way to become a true engineer. Understood? Right. Now, I am displaying a message on the screen. Afterwards, what I have to do? After that, user will enter a number that I need to read it and put it in this pocket, in this memory. How to read it? Scan F. What I have to do? Based on your previous experience, second day, second program. Your experience of first program, first day. Chani. Percentage D. What is the meaning of percentage D? No, that mod is different. This here it tells that, look, I am reading a number in this pocket, in this memory. This is of the type integer. Right? Here percentage D is different. This variable or this memory location is of the type integer. It is fixed. Don't ask question. Why percentage D? It could have been percentage I know, integer I. That's why it said syntax means it is defined like that. You are used in that way only. And yesterday I told you, since it is an integer, you have to put a symbol ampersand here. Do you know why it is ampersand? I told you yesterday, look, given a, a memory location, say n in this, of the type integer, you can visualize something like this. This is your house. Memory location, assume that it is your house. Whatever you read and store here, assume that it is you. It is you. Or number 13, I am going to store here. But when you are saying in your home, home has an address, you know. Home has address. House number... Okay, one, one, three. Right? Now what I'll do is, in this house, go and stay. Does that make any sense? No. But I'll say, in house number one, one, three, go and stay. Make some sense? Yes. Right? Similarly, we are saying, here I'm telling the address of the memory location. We'll see how the address looks later. Today is enough. Okay, house number 113 is an address. Okay, understood? Similarly, in computer, okay, you have a binary representation of the address that we will see it later. It is too early now. Got it? Right? So, understood? Now I am telling, look, whatever the number entered by the user, store it in this address, house number 113. Similarly, it has an address. So, address of this house n or memory location n, how do I get it? By using a notation called ampersand along with that. If I use only n, it is different. If I use ampersand, it means that it is an address of n. Are you okay? Right? 
So, when you write a program, when you sit in the class and listen, everything people write, teacher write, right, or you do it, you try to understand what it is. If a teacher doesn't explain, ask them what is that you are writing here, why this is required. If I don't write, what happens? What are the other ways of doing it? For example, I use percentage D. The next immediate your question should be, what are the other things? Right? So, if you ask the same question now, my answer is wait for that. We'll see it tomorrow, day after tomorrow. Right? So, this is the understanding of the scan F, percentage D and percent N. Are you okay with this? So, what is that you have done here? You have displayed a message on the screen and against that message, user is entering some number. That number is read in this memory location, in this pocket, in this house. Right? Are you clear? No, the number is there with you. What is the next logic? Number is there. What you have to do? You have to perform number. You can speak. No issues about that. Okay? You are supposed to speak in the class. Speak no shoes. Right? Number, mod, 2 or 10. Instead of idiot 10. Why it is 2? Yeah. You are finding whether it is a even or odd. And that logic is known to you. Right? So perform that. So now x intermediate value x okay, equal to n n more n mod 2. Is it writing? No. Right? So the C programming language says that this mod operation you will perform by using an operator. What is that operator? Loudly. Percentage. Right? Thus, this you will be referring the book and getting different operators. There are n number of operators you find in C language. And there are specific rules about the use of operator. We will see it later. Right? This is the second day, second program. Got it? Now, operator percentage, what are different operators? If I use multiple operators together, what happens? These are all the set of things that should trigger your mind. Right? So immediately you have to go back to your home and start reading on your own. Teacher is a facilitator in the class. Don't expect that teacher is going to tell everything to you. No. Don't think that one book is going to tell you everything. No. And when you place, when you face the interview in the 7th semester or 8th semester, you cannot say that one teacher has not taught me in the class so I don't know. It was not there in the syllabus so I don't know. You cannot tell. Are you getting it? So, self-learning is more important thing. Asking a question to your teacher or to yourself. Finding a solution on your own. Referring internet or different standard book. Refer standard books. That is very much necessary. Right? So now we have found syntax here is ends with semicolon. Now I have x. Now I have to take addition based on x. Right? In in flowchart, the addition is taken using the diamond shape. Yes or no? Now how do we do? We have a syntax called if. If x equal to 0. Very interesting, no? I am using 2 equal to. The moment I write something unnatural to you or not known to you, immediately you should have a question ready. Have a question. But wait until teacher completes. If x equal to 0, right, then print f percentage d is, is even. Yes. printf percentage d is odd. Since the space is not there here, so I am writing a little bit cryptic. Right? Thus. This is something different from what we did yesterday, no? Right? What is the difference? We will see it. Now look at that. I am using x equal to some value. x is assigned with some value which already you know that if x equal to 
zero. What is the difference between these two? Can you guess it now? What is the difference between these two? x equal to this. Normally in mathematics you use it. See if I write, say x equal to 20, what happens? x will receive the value 20. That is understood. Right? Now, what is this? What is that I am doing here? I am taking addition. What is that I am doing here? Compare this with the flowchart. I am checking. Is x equal to 0? So do I assign 0 to x? No. I am checking. I am comparing. I am comparing. Is x value is equal to 0? So 2 equal to is different from 1 equal to. 1 equal to is called assignment. Value is assigned to this. And double equal to is comparison. I am comparing the value of x with this. You can note down the question. What is the difference between equal to and 2 equal to in C language? Such a small thing, a learning will help you to do better in your laboratory examination, particularly oral examination. Maybe you write a program, a teacher will ask you during examination, what is the difference between these two? If you don't answer, I don't know. Teacher will understand that you don't know anything about this big zero. That's how the lab examination takes place. Right? Now what is that I'm doing? This is equivalent to the flow chart. Please refer to the flow chart. The diamond shape is x equal to zero. That I'm doing here. Is x equal to zero? If yes, if x equal to zero, yes, this part, no this part. If x equal to zero, do it. Else. That means else. Else means what? Otherwise. Otherwise. If x equal to 0, true, do this. If it is equal to false, you do here. What is that we are doing? If x equal to 0, if it is true, print f in the bracket, percentage d is even double quote. In double quote, whatever you write, it is printed as it is. Comma n. N. That means what happens? Wherever percentage D is there, no, there the N value is printed. So if my N is say, okay, uh, say 4, then what is printed here? 4 is even. In this place, the value N is substituted. Are you understanding this? N is not written after this message. Wherever percentage D is there, no, there the value of N is printed. So what is the output you get here? For the n equal to 4, 4 is even. Now consider that the number is 3. Right? 3 mod 2 is not equal to 0. Right? How the mod works you know. Right? How the mod works? 3. Right? Mod 2. 2 ones are 2. Here you get it 1. This is the mod. This is the due. You know it. Right? So, let me remove this. So 3 mod 2 equal to 1. Is 1 equal to 0? No, it is a comparison. No. When it is no, where it comes? Else part. Right? Print F percentage D, that is 3 is odd. This is printed here. So this is the one way of doing it. Now look at that. If x equal to 0, open bracket here close bracket here open and close bracket any number of instruction you can write not only one any number of instruction all the instruction in this are executed if x equal to 0 if x is not equal to 0 then all the instruction here are executed but in this case there are only there is only one instruction now in that case it is not this right this okay open bracket and close bracket Got it. Now what I can do is I can remove this. Right? So this is the program. This is the program. Do you have any question on this? Now I'll repeat once again. Before you start writing, you are writing the comments. You are writing the comments. After that, comment contains what? Author, date, problem statement. Then one full line you would write to separate the comments from, I mean, the header from rest all things. 
So your first statement is include stdio.h standard IO operation. Standard IO operation, printf, scanf, all these things we do here. And there are many other things we will see. It. In the main, main is the entry point okay, of your program execution. We will see there are interesting information about right what parameter we pass here. Right? Then how the who calls main? When you execute a program, main is being called. Who calls it? How it is being prepared? All those are interesting things. Right? It's too early now. I declare n and x as an integer. Then I print the message, enter the number. Then I read a number, integer number, in the location n. Then I perform the mod operation, result I store in the x. Then I check the x, mod, result of this mod operation, if it is equal to 0, then I will say that it is an even number, otherwise it is an odd number. Right? So, if you understand what all things we are doing, is it goes in this way. We pick problem, we create a logic and represent in the form of algorithm or flowchart, not both. But while learning, you have to do both. You follow the sequence, problem definition, write algorithm, write flowchart, then write program. This sequence you need to follow. Right? Then we write a program here. Now if you compare this, this is another way of writing a logic. And it is a C program. There is a definite way of doing it. In flowchart and algorithm, each one of you can write the way you want it. There is no standard way. But here there is a specific way you have to write it. So that compiler converts this program written in English language called high level language. It is called high level language because it is readable to human beings. It is near to the human beings. Computer cannot understand this. So compiler converts this into binary, a machine language. And computer okay, executes that binary. We will see what is the binary, how the information is being presented. That we will see later. Right? And program runs. So this is a simple program. With this we come to the end of the second problem. And if you have any questions, you can talk to me. Right? My mobile number is 944 Right? You can talk to me at any time. This particular thing is being created for the first years so that they can understand much better. So we will come with a okay, series of problem solving and its video. You can refer those things for better learning. So this is the second video, second problem, second day. Right? And you have a lot of homework to do. So please go back to your home and see each one of this. What are the things you are supposed to do in Homer? Put the size of integer. Right? Why ampersand I am using it? Right? What are the different operators? Right? What is different between equal to and double equal to? Right? And you need to write a program. Run it. See it. Feel it. On your own you do it. Right? Do not copy from others. If you copy, you don't understand. Because you are copying others logic. You need to create a logic. With that we come to the end of second program, second day. Thank you.